Welcome to the third day of the 10 days of awe. As we move into this third day, I want to remind you about the last couple of days and what we've been talking about, and that is the shofar and what it's blowing signifies. But as we move into this third day, I kind of want to shift gears a little bit and talk some about what the heart of Yom Teruah is, and that is relationship. God, he wants us to have a right, pure, and holy relationship with him, as well as with those around us. But part of the difficulty that we face as humans on our own is that it is impossible to please God and to maintain that perfect and holy and righteous relationship with him. And so our sin, it gets in the way of being right with him. Sin causes a separation between us and God because God is holy and he cannot stand sin. However, further than just impacting our relationship with the Lord, sin also has a tendency to affect the relationships around us. It can separate you from your spouse, from your children, from your coworkers, um, and even from fellow, fellow Christians. Sometimes sin, it gets in the way and it impacts our, our spiritual community. Sin, it can cause us to lose trust with others, and it can cause others to lose trust with us. And our actions, they can emotionally and sometimes even physically hurt other people. So as we talk about Yom Teruah and relationships, how do we move forward from sin? Knowing what the consequence of sin is, how do we move on to something better? It's important to know, again, that God, he wants us to have better relationships than what we are capable of having on our own and with our own strength. He wants us to be whole with him, to be complete with him, as well as those around us. He doesn't delight in fractured relationships. But because we cannot do this on our own strength, we must fully rely on God. And we must fully trust that his heart is for us to have right relationships with him and with others. We can make our relationship with God right by repenting, which is another central theme of these 10 days of awe. When we repent, we are able to come near to the Lord. We must be forgiven by the Lord before we can have relationship with him and with others for that matter. Our primary relationship is relative to the Lord. That is our central relationship is how, how we are with God. We are first and, foremo first and foremost his. We are his children and we are created by him and for the purpose of serving him and glorifying him. Once we are forgiven and in right standing with the Lord as his children, we may also focus on our relationships with those around us. In these 10 days of all, we have to take time to make things right with our family, with our friends and loved ones. Anyone that we have hurt, anyone that we have sinned against, we have to take this opportunity to make things right. That is part of what these 10 days of all are about. Jesus, he says this in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verses 23 through 24. So if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. We must be reconciled to those around us by apologizing for what we have done and even going a step further to make it right, to reverse the damage that we have done. We are called to take the initiative in forgiveness. Just as the Lord sent his son to die for us without us first asking, we must also take the initiative to bridge a gap between relationships that we have that are broken. We must also take the first step by admitting our faults and seeking forgiveness, asking somebody to forgive us. Not just saying, oh, sorry, but saying, will you forgive me? Do you forgive me? Forgiveness, it's not an easy task for us. It's not natural to us as humans. We must rely on the Lord and on his strength to provide us grace as we seek for forgiveness from others. We must also ask the same when others ask forgiveness of us. We must seek to be gracious and to say, yes, I forgive you. Yes, even though you hurt me, even though you wronged me, I forgive you. And so today I want you to think of people in your life who you might have wronged people in your life that are really hard to forgive, people in your life that you don't flat out just want to forgive. Today, I want you to think of that person. It might be a spouse, a child, a parent, a distant relative, a coworker, a friend, or someone else in your life. Begin to identify who you have offended or who has offended you and either seek out their forgiveness or begin to work in your own heart a way to forgive them. 
If you wrong somebody, I want you to take this opportunity today to seek forgiveness from that person. If somebody else has wronged you, I want you to release them from the prison of your heart. It's really easy to hold on to hard feelings for others. And just as the Lord has forgiven you, it's important that you also forgive others. So today identify somebody that you've hurt or somebody that has hurt you and begin the process of mending that relationship, even if it's beginning with you. As you seek the Lord for her strength and, and as he helps you to be, come back into right relationship with him and with those around you, I want you to reflect on the scripture found in Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 17. I'll just read verse 13 for you, but I want you to read um, ver uh, chapter 3 verses 12 through 17 on your own. But verse 13, it says, Bear with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Over these 10 days of awe, make relationships with others a priority. Make forgiveness a priority. And seek forgiveness with the Lord and with others that you have wronged. Thank you and we'll see you tomorrow for the fourth day of the 10 days of awe.